Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We congratulate Hajja Amina Fadili for having a new grandson yesterday, mashallah. Allah has given her daughter, uh, Nigin, beautiful. I haven't seen him, but I assume he's beautiful. He takes after his parents. So it's a combination of Lebanon and Iran put together. The father is Lebanese, the Negin is Iranian, but both of them are wonderful families, both families, the family of the husband and the family of the wife. And Muhammad, alhamdulillah, was born yesterday. He's in a good health. Inshallah, you bring him soon to the masjid and also to the Islamic, the full-time Islamic school. Uh, tonight, we will uh, study only one verse, verse number uh, 97 in Surah An-Nahl, Surah An-Nahl, the B, chapter 16, and this is verse 97 in Surah An-Nahl. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala anbiya illahi jami'an, wa ala sayyidihim wa khatamihim, habibi ilahi al-alameen, abil qasim al-mustafa Muhammad. وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين وعلى سيدنا ومولانا الإمام الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون. This is one of the best statements and verses in the Holy Quran, which equalizes between men and women in the eyes of God. According to the Islamic tradition, Islamic law, men and women are equal. Neither men are superior to women or they surpass women, nor women are superior to men or they surpass men. They are of the same value. They are, men and women, are of the same stature and value in the eyes of God. Maybe societies discriminate. Maybe people discriminate. But God does not discriminate. God says, this is my path. This is my way. Men and women are equal. We cannot claim that the role of men in the society is more important than the role of women. Neither the role of women is more important than the role of men. Both of them play a very important role, very crucial role, very necessary role to protect the society, to maintain the society, to raise families, to contribute, to give, to work. So God here is saying that they share the same moral responsibility. Men and women share the same moral responsibility. We cannot say the responsibility of men is greater than women. No, there is no such thing. And at the same time, they share the same recompense and reward for their deeds. God does not give women... C or B, and he gives men A plus. Same reward. And this is what he says in his book. Let's read the translation. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ Whosoever works righteousness, works goodness, produces goodness, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا Whether male or female, doesn't matter. And is a believer in God, man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha wahwa mu'min, a believer in God, 
فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً We shall give them new life, a good life. And I'm going to explain the meaning of a good life. وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And we shall surely render unto them the reward in accordance with the best of that which they used to do. So God says, when it comes to spiritual value, when it comes to moral value, when it comes to moral responsibilities, both are equal. We don't discriminate between them. We don't put man above. We don't say men are superior, men are more important. No such thing is found throughout the Holy Quran. When it comes to moral responsibility, the gender is not an issue at all. The gender is not an issue. They might have different roles. Different roles because they have different natures. How do I turn it off? They have different natures, different physical, physiological, psychological nature, biological nature. They are different. They are not the same. So in their nature, they are different. They are not equal in their nature, but in their role, in their contribution, in their significance, in their importance, they are equal. None is above the other. In the eyes of God, both are needed, both are necessary, both are good, both are important in the eyes of God. And another verse in Surah Al-Imran, a beautiful verse, chapter number 3, Surah Al-Imran, verse number 195, I shall not let the work of any of you, male or female, be in vain. God does not say, yeah, man, we, get, we, we, we accept your deeds, we reward you, we give you credit, but women, you know, your work is not accepted, your work is not appreciated. No. Both your work, be it male or female, لا أضيع. I would not let it go in vain. The contribution of women is important. If some societies abuse women or neglect them or do not appreciate them and if they treat them second-class citizens, this is their problem, not God's problem. A problem created by that society. It hurts me a lot, but I have to say, among us there is an honorable lady from Afghanistan. She was attacked because she's a female. She was attacked because she follows the school of Ahlul Bayt. And she was disfigured, her face is disfigured. By a man who says he should be in control of the family. He should be in control of the society. He should have the upper hand and women have to be subjugated to him. These things happen. This lady is here, living example. This is unacceptable. This is a crime against not only her, a crime against the entire humanity. The entire humanity. God says when someone is being abused, this abuse, this assault, this assault is considered against the entire mankind. When one person was murdered, when Cain murdered Abel, Qabil murdered Habil, God said, Man qatala nafsan, as a result of that, min ajli dalik, because one person, one individual, killed another individual. We don't consider it, this is limited to two individuals. We consider this assault, universal assault on humanity. Min ajli dalika katabna ala bani Israel. When you assault someone, 
with no justice, with no reason, with no justification. When you murder someone, you are murdering seven billion people, not one person. Because mankind are one family. It doesn't matter where were you born. It doesn't matter the color of the, your skin. It doesn't matter your language. You are a human. You belong to a family called humanity and mankind. You are a member of that mankind, of that family. It's unacceptable, unacceptable to treat women or minorities or any individual to that effect unjustly. It's an assault against the entire system. And therefore, because it, if it, it is assault against entire mankind, we all have responsibility to stand and defend that victim. Defend that victim to restore justice. If we don't restore justice, we are guilty too. If we remain silent and we do nothing and we just watch and we only feel sorry inside and we say nothing to correct this, to defend that victim, we are guilty too. So God says, it doesn't matter who did this. I don't look at the gender. I look at the quality of the work. I give a credit to the quality of the work. Have you seen sometimes in some countries when you go to the finals, your name is not on the paper. Why you don't put your name on the paper? Why? Tell me why. Some of you are teachers. You don't put your name on these papers they provide you. I remember when I went to school, to college, they give us papers. You don't put your name. You just put the answers. You submit. Your name is not there. Because if you put your name, the teacher is going to recognize you. And if a teacher recognizes you, he's going to maybe, maybe here, favoritism is going to play a role. Nepotism, favoritism, he's my friend, he's the son of my friend, he's from my city, he's from my family, he's from my group. So they tell you, don't put... We don't want the teacher to recognize you. The teacher is correcting a paper, not knowing who is the person there. When he corrects it, they give it to someone else. He recognizes who wrote these answers, but not the teacher, not the one who corrects the papers. This is very good. Because he's giving you the grade, not to the person, but to the answers. God says, I do the same. I give the grades not to the name, your name, your family name, your color, your gender. I give the credit and the reward and the return to your answers, to your contribution, to your work, to your amal, to your deed. This is very promising. This Verse 97 is very promising. Whosoever does righteousness, be it male or female, we don't look at your gender, be it male or female, but he should have faith. God promises both men and women, promises them paradise, salvation, but he says, I have two conditions. I want you to meet these two conditions. Number one, wahwa mu'min. That person should be a believer. That person should have true faith in God, true trust in God, true connection with God. God should be number one in his or her life. Wahwa mu'min. This is the meaning of wahwa mu'min. A true believer in God. Faith has two locations, two places for faith. One is public here. We are sitting. We are studying the Quran. We are praying together. This is in public display. This is public display. But there is another location. Another place for faith. Where is it? 
Huh? Where is it? Here, in your heart. This is a private. This is private. Nobody can see this except God. Here, outside, everybody can see. There are cameras, there are people, there are public, public display. This is one aspect of faith. But the real aspect of faith is here, in your heart. Nobody can watch it or see it except God. Nobody knows what goes in my heart except God. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنْ وَمَا تُخْفِي الصُّدُورِ God is the only one who knows what goes in our hearts and minds. So he's the judge. And he's the one who's going to give the credit. And when he gives the credit, he gives what we deserve. What we deserve. He doesn't give more or less. What each person deserves. This is the place of faith in your heart. It's between you and your Lord. This is the real faith, my friends. We might see a lot of this public displays, public display of faith, a lot. In Muslim countries, there is a plenty. 24-7, either you hear the Adhan or the Quran or people are praying in the mosque, going back and forth between their homes and their work and, their, and, and the mosque. Plenty of public display. But do we say, do we see also plenty of sincerity and connection with God here in the heart? Do we see that too? If we see that too, this is an Islamic society. But if only we see public display and we don't see faith in the heart, there is no commitment, there is no connection with God, then that public display doesn't help. The least I can say does not help. Doesn't help. They integrate each other. Public display, but most importantly, the connection with God, trust in God, faith in God. Wahwa mu'min. This is the meaning of wahwa mu'min. So this is number one. God says, I need men and women, number one, to possess faith and connection, real faith. Real faith is not just salat and siyam. Salat and siyam, prayers and fasting are displays. Displaying something in public. But I need something more than this public display. I need to see real commitment, real connection. So this is number one. Number two, God says... وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا The first, the second one is مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا عَمَلُ الصَّالِحْ The virtue, the good deeds. Faith alone, faith alone is not enough. Faith alone is not enough. You have to produce, you have to contribute, you have to work hard, you have to give. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا the righteous deeds also. And my friends, if the faith is good, if the faith is genuine, then definitely that faith is going to be followed by good deeds. You will do good deeds if your faith is good. Why sometimes we don't see good deeds? Because the faith is corrupted. The faith is not genuine. If the faith is not genuine, then it is not followed by good deeds. God says the reward of those are of two, two faults. One, they're going to see it here in this life. The second reward, they're going to see, see it in the hereafter. What they're going to see, those who have faith and good deeds, what they're going to see in this life, We will provide them, we will give them and provide them, a good life, hayatan tayyib. So when you open the books of tafsir, commentaries on the Quran, there are tens of theories on the meaning of hayatan tayyib. What does hayatan tayyib mean here in this context? Some say 
Hayatan Tayyibah, it's that the success and the aid that God is going to provide those who have faith and good deeds. God is going to aid them. God is going to help them. God is going to support them. God is going to be with them. So those people who have faith and who have good deeds, they're going to be successful in their lives. How successful? Just making more money? Not necessarily making more money make them re really successful. Being success successful in this life means, number one, they have the tawfiq, the opportunity to worship God. This is number one. Number two, they have the opportunity, the success to study, to learn, to be learned people, not to be ignorant. They start studying. They need to know their roles and their responsibilities, their duties in this life. They study. Number three, they going to raise good families, good children, good grandchildren. They going to be role models for their families, for their neighborhood, for their communities. Number four, they going to help others. They help themselves as well as others. This is why in the society, my friends, we see, we see two types of people. Some people, they only help themselves and benefit themselves. But this benefit is not extended to others. Their focus is only themselves. They don't care about their neighbors, their community members, people who sleep in the streets, people who are hungry, people who are sick, people who are suffering. They don't care. They don't even see it. They don't have feelings for them. They go home, all what they think about is themselves, their welfare, their well-being, their happiness. That's it. On the other hand, there are people who live for others. They serve others. They sacrifice for others. They are not satisfied that only them, they have good life. They want others to have good life too. This is the difference. Do you live for only yourself? Or do you live for yourself and your community and mankind too? This is very important. I see in my community here in this mosque, in this community, many people who really, the least I can say about them, they are sacrificing people. Sacrificing. We learn sacrifice from them. We learn selflessness. They put others before them. Plenty of people. And also, we might, we might, maybe not in this community, but other places on earth, there are who, people who are very selfish. They see nothing beyond themselves. Period. They don't care what happens to the whole world. God says, Hayatan Tayyibah is when you are able to serve others. You have the chance, the tawfiq. You live in this life an average, an average of 25,500 days. 25,500 days. The average of the days we live in this life. Some people, when they leave, they leave a good legacy. They leave their marks in the society, in the country that they live in. Some people, they leave their marks in many countries, not just one country. As Jesus says, وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ Wherever I travel in the land, I leave marks of goodness. I build, I unite people, I inspire people. In every land, doesn't matter, there is no boundaries for me. And there are some people who live the same period of time, but when they die, nobody notices that they are, they are dead, because they are already dead. They are already dead. 
No contribution. Zero contribution. Zero contribution. What is? What did they do for their communities or society? What did they do? Nothing. Already dead. Nobody even notices that they are absent. This is the difference, my friends. Life is a test. God put us here for a test, for a reason. So which one do you want to be? Which one? A person who leaves a good legacy? Maybe humble, maybe humble. You don't have to change the whole world, but a sincere legacy. Or do you want to leave this life with nothing? Nothing, no contribution. Nobody is going to remember you. In fact, some people say, Alhamdulillah, one more person is less. Which one? This is up to us. We decide this. We decide this fate and this destiny. It's not imposed upon us by God. God would help us, but it all depends on us. Depends on our free will. So this is one opinion. By the way, Imam Ali alayhi salam, all, all of his sayings are brilliant and fascinating, but some of them, they really stand unique. He says, you know, what is the value of a human being, every human being, every individual, the value of every individual is based on his or her contribution. What is your value in the eyes of God? How much are you worth? Because there is a price tag for each one of us. There is a price tag. We don't see it. Have you seen the price tags in the supermarkets when you go for all these goods? There is a price tag. There is also a price tag, invisible price tag, for us, the humans, the individuals. But God knows about it. We don't see it. We don't see this. It's not visible. It's not written. God knows it. Amir al muminin Imam Ali salam, says, your price tag depends on the amount of your contribution your society how much a difference you make to your society how much this is your price tag so how much do you want to be your price tag in the eyes of God high medium little depends on your contribution how much you give and when I say give it's not only about money don't get me wrong Sometimes you are penniless, but you have a lot of contribution, a lot of goodness to give, a lot of, a lot of love and care and work that you can do for your society. It doesn't have to be always money. So this is one opinion. And the second one, the exegesis say, exegesis say, that God provides those men and women who have faith and they do what? They have faith and they do good deeds. They do good deeds. He says that God is going to give them less stress and more satisfaction. They're going to be less distressed about this dunya. This dunya is very distressing my friends this dunya is terrible puts a lot of stress on you but those people they're going to have a peaceful life tranquil life which is less distressful when it comes to dunya and more satisfying they have more inner peace they enjoy their life they are not frustrated some people live 70 years frustrated, angry, unhappy, complaining. They would never say, oh, alhamdulillah, today I'm, I'm good, I have everything, I'm happy. Never. Always when you ask them, some people, I never ask him, how are you? Because I get in trouble, believe me. Once I ask him, oh yeah, my head, my legs, my car, my house, my son, my business, my blah, 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 blah. Never they say, well, today, alhamdulillah, I was happy, my mother was with me, 
my kids were here, you know, my health was good, you know, we, have some, we had some guests coming, we had some, I did this, I did that, never, always complaining, always complaining. But if they see people who, who live below them, below them, they would never complain. If you go to some areas here on planet Earth, if you go to some countries and you see how people search in the trash to find some food, in the trash, in the very, very, very dirty trash to survive on a couple of bites, then you will know that God has given you so many things. God has given you so much things and you have to be thankful to him. Don't, don't always complain. And if you want to complain, complain to God. This is what Yaqub said. Jacob, Jacob, Prophet Jacob, he said, I would never complain to people because he lost his son, Joseph. He said, إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ I share my suffering and my pain with God, not with people. If I share it with people, I'm lowering myself. Why should you lower yourself? You have dignity. Don't lower yourself. Yes, you go to the doctor. Of course, you have to tell him the pain. You cannot go to the doctor's office and tell him, I'm perfect, doctor, I'm healthy. He says, then why are you are here? <laughs> you have to tell him. You go to the police station. You go to the lawyer. You have to. But don't go left and right for people who cannot do anything for you. Your friends are going to be unhappy. You're going to break their hearts when you, when you tell them you're suffering. Your enemies are going to rejoice. They say, yeah, good. Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy that he's suffering. <laughs> so don't do these things. Don't. Complain to God. Complain to God. And God would listen. And God will help. God will help you. So hayatan tayyiba means a life of inner peace. Doesn't have much money. I told you this one time. I traveled to the Philippines, to the southern area of the Philippines. Plenty of islands, hundreds of islands. I went to an island, there were not much inhabitants, almost empty. But we traveled through these farms. Those are mostly farmers there. But they were smiling. Almost, almost 99.9% .9 of them were smiling. Except me and my friend, we were not smiling. The rest, they were smiling. And I would think, they don't have here oil, petrol. They don't have gold or silver. They don't have fancy cars. They don't have fancy mansions. They don't have fancy livings. Some of them are living in a very, very humble cottages, small cottages. But they are smiling. They are happy. They are welcoming. This is inner satisfaction. This is something that you cannot get it with money, believe me. You can't get it with money. And Imam Ali السلام, says exactly this. He says, Hayatan tayyiba means al qanaa when you are content. Beautiful life, good life means when you are content with your life, you are not angry. You give thanks to God. Qana'a. Qana'a. Inner content, inner satisfaction. That what I have is good. I can use it. Maybe tomorrow things are going to change. But now what I have, the shelter that I'm having, the car that I'm having, the health that I'm having, is very good. So this is the meaning of in this life, a good life, a satisfying life, a peaceful life, and then the second, the second reward, and in the day of judgment, we would render unto them ajrahum the reward in accordance with the best of that which they used to do. God gives the best price for your product. Some people manipulate. You work for them, 
You do good job, they don't give you the price. They give you less. They abuse you. They don't appreciate what you are doing for them. Even if your job is excellent, they would not give you the market price. They give you below the market price. God says, I don't do these things. No, no, no. I'll give you the best price in the market. I will make you happy. You know, sometimes when someone works for you, you give him the money, you tell him happy. He says, yes, I'm happy. God says, this is what I'm going to do for you on the day of judgment. I give you a reward that you deserve. You deserve. Your work is not going to go in vain here. I'm not going to overlook any of the good deeds you do here. Even the smallest ones, they are registered in the book. They are counted, accounted for. We're going to put them in the book and we're going to reward you there. So you have to be happy that your sacrifice, even if people do not see it, even, people, even if people do not appreciate it, but there is one who always see and he always appreciate. And he always give you the best reward. We, tonight we have a new sister, a new believer who converted to Islam, Sister Lisa from uh, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, Florida. We welcome here. Inshallah, she's following these sessions on YouTube. But tonight, she came here to see the wonderful audience we have here. You don't see the audience on the camera. You only see me. So this is the audience here. And you have many sisters who uh, are also converts. I can see some of them here in the, in the same sister Monica. Behind you, sister... Uh, from Thailand and there is one sister sitting back there at the column and many others alhamdulillah so inshallah they'll be your friends and your sisters Allahumma khfar lil mu'minina wal mu'minat tomorrow inshallah salatul jumu'ah Friday prayers at 1 and then a Friday night we have the youth session invite your youth your young generation to come and participate on Saturday we have the Eat Picnic at William Mason Park. This Eat Picnic is organized by the Shia Muslim Council of Southern California. This is an umbrella organization for 15 or 16 Shia Muslim mosques and Islamic centers here in Southern California. Alhamdulillah, they got together, they established this council, and they have common activities between them. One of them is the Eid Picnic, so please try to be there at 11 a.m. We have the Jama'a prayers from 11 until 5 p.m. on Saturday, May 6th, inshallah. And then there is a sister session on Sunday here, Sunday in the afternoon. And what else? Salamatkum, according to the Arab. Again, again, congratulations. Hajja Afsana for Muhammad Agha. Inshallah, he speaks Arabic and Persian and English, of course, three languages. Allahumma khfar al mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Tabi Allahumma bainana wa bainahum bil khayrat wa ajjil fi faraj sayyidina wa maulana sahib al asri wa zaman wa ila arwah al mu'mina wal mu'minat tawab al fatiha ma'as salati ala Muhammad.